Hey guys, somebody asked me, should they learn WebAssembly in 2020? Short answer is only if you need to. WebAssembly, if you don't know, is a way of basically distributing a web application as a binary. So that translated into non-nerd means you can create a web app and you basically compile it down to lower level source code and then you can upload that to the browser and all the modern browsers now support web assembly at the end of the day you basically have a very very high performant web app that runs in the browser all the codes in the browser so i won't go over all the pros and cons of web assembly let me just give you the business view of this top level it's very niche meaning you won't need to even consider web assembly except on very rare occasions maybe you want to have uh, an application a web application that requires a lot of horsepower maybe a, a game that runs within a web browser maybe a particular type of application that does some heavy duty number crunching and you just want that extra speed and efficiency that's where web assembly would come in super handy um there could be some issues, though, with terms of security because you have to upload all that information with WebAssembly, whereas if you go with a traditional web app, you can keep all your delicate information and so forth on the server so it's not easily accessible, whereas WebAssembly, it's compiled. Um, it could, you know, it's pretty safe, but it could be open. It's there, right? The information is there, so you wouldn't have critical information or sensitive information would be a better word uh, encapsulated within a web assembly uh, deployment so there you go it's a newer technology it's highly niche it's not one of these things i'd run out to learn as i said in so many of my videos the key to learning uh, any technology is to concentrate on the fundamentals and then when you get out there in the real world in the workforce then you'll learn any specialized technology you happen to need to learn for that particular job so for example who knows you do your foundations and your web tech and then you find out that one of your clients wants to have a very high performant application that runs in the web browser that does heavy duty calculations so their web assembly might come in handy in that situation you may have another situation where you have a small business client and they just want to set up a, a blog maybe you get a basic shopping cart going and some uh, customized basic functionality like a members area this could all be done with wordpress with some plugins and maybe some light php code again in that situation you would use wordpress and php in the other situation you would use WebAssembly. you get the idea don't get caught up in what's universally the best language to learn it all is circumstantial depending on the project let me conclude this video by uh, answering another question that's put to me. Somebody's asking, should they learn multiple languages at the same time? A short answer is no. You start at the beginning. You start with the simple languages and you move on from there. So within the context of the web stack, you would start with HTML5, then do CSS3, then I would do JavaScript, and then from there, you have a whole slew of choices ahead of you. Everybody uses those three first languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And then after that, in terms of your server-side code, you could go into Python, you can go to PHP, you can go to C Sharp with the .NET framework, you go to Java Spring, you could do, uh, there's, all, there's all kinds out there. There's all kinds out there. Now, which back-end technology? Server-side means back-end. You know, PHP, JavaScript on the server as well. No, that's also an option. Uh, which one you choose largely depends on where the jobs are at in your particular area. You may be in Germany. c .net will be big. Uh, you may be in San Francisco where, for whatever reasons, they're still using Ruby on Rails. You know, it all depends. It all depends. So, yeah, do you learn multiple languages at the same time? No. You learn one at a time. If you're doing the web stack, that's the order, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But what you're going to find, though, in terms of programming languages, Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, PHP, uh, and so on and so forth, many languages, Dart, 
they're very, very similar. They share many of the similar qualities and principles and concepts. And uh, though the code that you actually write will be different, but sometimes not so different. Not so different. Java and JavaScript will be. They'll, uh, they'll remind you of each other. So will PHP, etc. So what you're going to find is that once you've done one programming language, the rest will come easy. Again, anybody who follows my channel on a regular basis knows all this stuff. I've talked about this before. Why do I put out these videos like this? Because I'm. Uh, not everybody is a follower of mine on the web, so I have to put out targeted videos to get the different people out there. That's all. Anyhow, uh, that being said, I put out, rarely do I put out clickbaity articles or videos, rather. It's not my thing. I try to answer a lot of questions on this vlog. All right, that's it for now. Bye bye. Just a quick note Studio Web 5 is live. I'm recording this January 14th and 2020. It's live. It's largely a huge user interface update, makes it smoother, easier to uh, use, some mild, in terms of the student end, there's some mild enhancements here and there in terms of functionality, and also some mild content update as well. Uh, the foundational courses are pretty solid, I update them when need be. At the end of the day, the web stack foundations, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, uh, SQL, PHP, well, SQL is not web, but it's, I include that in there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. HTTP client server model. This hasn't changed in years and years, so I update things when need be, but uh, so everything is up to date. As you'll see in the uh, reviews, you'll learn a lot with Studio Web 5. There you go. Links below. Shameless self promotion on my part. What can I tell you? In terms of new content, um, I'm not going to get into all the details. There's already some updates I did to like the Web Foundations course, which gives you an overview of the web, you know, you know, hosting and domain names and code editors and et cetera, et cetera. Help you to understand all these things. So that's been updated just like in the last few days. Um, the major content release, I've been slowly leaking it out. The major content that's coming out soon, very, 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 very soon is uh, certifications. We have a very robust and powerful certification system that uh, really tests people's knowledge in the various languages and skill sets that we're going to be testing. So these certifications could be worth, uh, they're going to be worth something relative especially to certificates of completion which have no value since there's no testing. But anyway, these certifications have been used in schools for a long time. Of all, this is a brand new system, far more robust. I'll be much more about that a little bit later. All right, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Thank you.